Hello everyone, it's Skeletor again. Welcome back to my channel. Give it a house shift. How is everybody? So, um, just got done doing the retro oven and somewhere along the way I messed something up because this just does not want to stay closed, but that's fine because I was going to put something in it anyway so that way you'll be able to see it. So, I'm, I'm not even going to stress about that, but one of the things I did want to do is make some cookware for the top of the stove. So, I was thinking about it and I thought, okay, I want some pots and pans and things. I do have some paint coming that's um, from Tamiya. That's these guys here. So it's a company out of Japan. They do wonderful things for models um, and kits. As a matter of fact, this, if you're putting together any of like the, the room kits where they come with the dust cover that's made out of the plastic and it's flat and you have to put it together and you don't want to see a bunch of glue lines, this is how you do it. It's brilliant. You put it on there, you hold them, and, and it does like that capillary action and it just right into the um, seams and it's actually really strong. So just out of nowhere, FYI, I enjoy that one. But they do different paints for uh, making model planes and cars and all kinds of stuff. Um, and so I've got a chrome one coming. And I'm thinking, you know, if that chrome one's really, really shiny, then I can do stainless steel cookware too. But for now, we're going to make some pots. So, what kind of pot are we going to make? Well, I'm going to show you. We are going to make one of these bad boys. Okay, I am not doing the plaid, by the way. But this is my favorite cookware, of course, in the whole world. This is Le Creuset. Um, is it expensive? Yes, it is. Is it worth every penny of it? Oh, yes, it is. Um, this stuff will outlive you. There's one at my grandmother's house that's been there since 1935. Still looks exactly the same. It's brilliant stuff. So, of course, I want to do this. So that's what we're going to make. And it should be fairly straightforward. I take top off here. And that way you can see the side. So this is a four and a half quart. This is about, it's an average size pot. It's a little on the smaller side. Um, the most popular size is going to be your five and a half quart. This is a little bit bigger. Um, but I do use this one all the time, and plus it's got a tartan on it. Of course I use it all the time. Um, but anyway, so we're going to model it after this, because this is about the, you know, size of a normal pot that you would see on the stove. So how are we going to do that? Well, I got me a piece of paper. And we're going to measure it. So this ought to be good. Alright, so what we're going to do is, we are working in 12 scale. So with 12 scale, 1 inch equals 1 foot, right? So if this is, say, six inches tall, in reality, we're going to make it a half an inch tall. I hope that makes sense. I hope it'll make more sense as we go. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to draw our pot. Okay, and you're, you're about to see why this isn't like a painting and drawing channel. Because, <laughs> yeah, I am just god awful at it, seriously. Okay, so we have our pot here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure certain things on it. So. First, I want to know how tall this thing is, right? So I'm going to put this here. And so we're looking at about, because the sides slope up a little bit. So we're just going to say four inches. Okay, so our height from here to here is four inches. So now that we have our height, we need to get our diameter. And we're going to do the outside diameter versus inside because inside it'll, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out. We're not going to worry too much about that. So outside diameter, you're looking at about nine and one, two, three, four, five eighths. So this is nine and five eighths. I should probably put that over there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. And then for the handles, we're going to go ahead and measure those too. So the handles across at the widest is about three and three quarter inches. So handles are three and three quarter inches. And then they stick out about one and a half inches. Okay. You saw kind of put an arrow there. I'm still going to not understand any of this when we come back to look at it. So it's all right. Don't worry about it. Okay, so we'll set that aside for just a minute and we will turn our attention to the lid. Now the lid's pretty easy. We're going to have our knob on the lid. The thing that distinguishes uh, a Le Creuset lid is going to be these three rings here. Okay, 
and you'll notice the center ring is only partial and then we have the name. Haven't figured out how I'm going to pull that part off. We're going to try, but I haven't figured I can just see me with like this tiny snake of clay trying to make letters out yet now. Okay, so what we're going to do is first I'm going to measure the knob. So the knob is about two and a quarter inches across. So two and one quarter inches across. And then from, we'll do from the center. I'm going to have to hold this up so I can see it for a second. And then I'll put it so where y'all can see it. <laughs> Yeah, it's really hard to see because, of course, it's up. So I'm going to say about two and a half inches from the center. And that seems about, does that seem right to you? Oh, yeah, because it's all the way across. I don't, I don't know. Okay, so to the first ring, we're going to call that two and a half inches. I mean, this is not, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Okay, and we'll do this outside one. So we're about an inch from the outside for the outside ring one inch and then from the outside to this inner one is it two so you know what let's let's get rid of this one here because I know symmetry and I know that we got this here if this is two inches that's going to be three inches from here let's see let's see if I'm right oh I'm right more or less you know give or take tiny bit okay so now we've got that part and then the last thing we need to do, because these lids are domed, right? So you can put it on here and you can put food in there and stuff while you're cooking. You can put your extra stuff in there or whatever. It's got a nice dome shape to it. Um, so it's going to stick up a bit, but we need to figure out how much it sticks up. <laughs> and I'm putting that down very carefully because even though this is tempered glass, this is cast iron, so not exactly light and fluffy. And if I put that down too quick, I'm going to be out one Tim Holtz craft mat. So let's see. I'm looking at this from the side. I would say that brings the total height to about five inches. So I'll just write down with lid five inches high. Okay. I think that's all the measurements we need so let me go put this back real quick all right so we have our measurements for this um, and we'll we'll get to the calculation part because I'm going to do that with my calculator thing over here on the computer um, because yeah if I try to do math in my head that is not going well at all so um, we also want to measure our burner just to make sure so our burner is about three quarters of an inch so we'll write stove burner. See, it's just mocking me now. Okay, so it's gonna be three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna set the stove back over here so it can mock me from over there instead of in my face right here. All right, so we have our measurements. We'll fiddle with those here in a sec. And we need to figure out what are we gonna make this out of? Well, I've got a couple options. Of course, I have polymer clay here. I am not God's gift to polymer clay. I'm actually really not good at it. Um, but we're going to try. I also have paper clay. This stuff is great. And then I have this, which is the um, Sculpey Air Dry Clay, which I use to make... What the heck did I make with that? I, don't know, I made something exciting with it, and I was very happy because it actually worked correctly. Oh, I did the, the swords and things with it. Um, and it's, it's really easy to deal with, it. and it's nice and soft, because that's the, the beef I have with these, is you have to condition them. So you have to sit there and smush and smush and smush and smush. And it feels like I'm going to have, you know, arthritis when I'm done smushing it. And I don't have the little pasta machine thing to run it through or any of that. So I think what we'll do, because we can, we can have more than one pot, right? Um, we'll do one out of this, one out of this, one out of this. And that way we'll see which one looks better and we'll see which one takes paint better. And speaking of paint, so Le Creuset is porcelain enameled cast iron. So enamel is, it has its own look. So if we paint that with say an acrylic paint and even a gloss, it's not going to look quite right. So I went to the model section. And I got some of this. So this is the testers um, enamel model paints that you use on like model cars and stuff like that. 
Um, I got this kind of whitish color. This is as close as I could get because, of course, the enamel on the inside is more of like a sand color, um, but they didn't have that. So mm. got to do what you got to do. We'll pretend it's the white interior. Yeah, that'll be great. So I have that for the interior. And the exterior colors here, I have three. Um, this is a really pretty super dark blue metallic because it's me. Of course, it's metallic. Um, and it actually does mimic a color of Le Creuset called Midnight Blue, which I do have some of, so that's pretty cool. And then, and yes, I did, I did pick out colors that I know are actual colors of Le Creuset, sort of. So this is kind of like a purpley sort of color. So this is metallic again, so it's kind of like a berry kind of color. Um, berry's not a metallic color, but I like metallic, so we went there. And then this is more of a flat color. This is more of a Caribbean blue here. So... It works out perfect because we got the paper clay, the Sculpey air dry clay, and the polymer clay, and we have three colors. So we'll just make three pots like this. Um, so I am going to figure out the conversions for these. Basically, since I'm going one inch, oh yeah, here, let's just dig right out of there. Okay, one inch equals, sorry, I had to pause for a plane there for a second. Okay, so one inch equals 12, um, inches. So this is your mini and this is your real life. Okay. So to figure out how to get these done. So let's say I want my total height is five inches of the pot here. I'm going to do five divided by 12. You will get a decimal point. That resulting decimal point is going to be how big it is. Okay, so this is the magic of calculators. I know that 5 divided by 12 equals 0 0.41 bunch of sixes, so we're going to call that 0 0.42. Okay, so that means since we're all in inches, 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 in order to have a 5 inch pot be in 12th scale, it needs to be 0 0.42 inches. Okay, so let's take the diameter here. That was 9 and 5 eighths, so we need to convert that to a fraction. And that's going to be 0.63 roughly. So 9.63 divided by 12 is 0.8025. So we'll just call that, you know, 0.8 of an inch. And that fits because our burner across is 3 quarters of an inch, which is 0.75. And I would expect this to be just slightly larger than the burner. So we also know that we're on track. Um, as far as our scale is concerned, okay? So I'm going to do that for all this stuff, and then I will come back with uh, a more cohesive list on the back here of what each of the measurements are, okay? All right, so I am back from my exciting math, and I've brought the camera down lower, obviously, because we're going to be, you know, working a little closer, and I don't have to get a big old pot in there in the shot. So this is what I have so far, okay? So the pot height, and this is... This is just the pot here um, without the lid. The height's going to be 0.33, so a third of an inch. Um, diameter is going to be 0.8. The handle width will be 0.3. The depth, which is how far it sticks out, is going to be 0.13. These obviously aren't hard and fast rules. It's just so that I know I'm not making the handles too big or too small, so they'll look like they're supposed to be. Um, and then the lid, which I neglected to actually measure the diameter of the lid, and it's 9 and 3 quarter inches. Um, is going to be 0.82. So it's be slightly larger because, of course, it kind of hangs over. Um, the knob will be 0.19 inches. And then I've got the distance of the rings from the outside. And then the total height of the piece will be 0.42. So 0.42 is just, a, you know, a little under half an inch, which is about the height you would expect for a, a pot in 12 scale. So the math is working out correctly, which is good. So now the key is how are we going to do this, right? There's a couple different ways you can. You can use foil to make yourself like a thing and put something over it. We could roll it out flat um, and cut a circle and then cut a strip. And we're going to kind of do that. But I thought, you know, it'd be really super helpful is if I had something that had what would be roughly the inside diameter of this. And I tried my glue bottle. It's just a little too big, which is a bummer because it's got the perfect uh, rounding for the inside. But I do have this. So these are the Tim Holtz Distress um, brushes, like um, stencil brushes or whatever. 
ink brushes, whatever you want to use. And I can't remember how you do this. There we go. I knew there was a fancy schmancy way to not destroy the bristles with this thing. Okay. But this is roughly three quarters of an inch wide. We want to go slightly more than that, right? Because the diameter on our little measurements, wherever that went. Ah, anyways, three quarters of an inch, 0.75. <laughs> we want to go a little bigger than that. And that's going to be about once you get the thickness of the material on there, because we're not going to make it super thick, um, it should work with this. So, and this will make a nice, um, you know, it'll be the same size every time sort of thing. And we can do two of them. We can actually do all three of them because I've got another one of these. So that's probably what we're going to use on it. Yeah, so, okay. What we're going to do now is I'm going to get um, some of the different materials out. I think we'll do the polymer clay first. So I'm going to get my little tools and junk um, and we will do the base of it. Um, and then we can also use this to measure the lid. Now that I think about it, you just put it down and, and kind of trace around it. Or I'll see if I've got a circle punch. I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So anyways, I'll be back with you in just a sec. So for this first one, we we're going to use this one, and I always keep it, um, it in a plastic bag when I'm not using it because, yeah, it's not going to dry out super quick, but, you know, still, why why tempt it? So we're going to use the Fimo Soft, which is, I guess it's soft-ish. Still had to sit here and play with this stuff for a while, but, um, so I've got this a lot more malleable now. You kind of just sort of have to, to knead it up a bit um, and, and get it to a little warmer of the temperature seems to... To help. Um, so I've been doing that. And then while I was doing that, we have, you know, all the measurements here. So for example, we have our handle here. The depth is supposed to be 0.31 inches, right? Or I mean 0.13. Okay, see my my nifty ruler here? So, so you think I'm going to find 0.13 on that anytime soon? I am not because it's done in eighths, not tenths. So I went ahead and did a calculation in millimeters. Why? Because metric is far more precise and accurate, okay? I can find 3.3 .3 millimeters, so it's three and a tiny bit more millimeters on this ruler, way easier than I can find 0.13 on the other one, right? So each of these little lines is a millimeter because <laughs> theirs is divided into 10. It's base 10 instead of eight, so much, much, much easier to deal with. So what we're going to do is we have our little thing we're going to use as a form. So I was thinking about it as I was getting this stuff to where it needs to be. <clears throat> and I thought with my luck, okay, what's going to happen is I'll put it on here and it'll look great and then I won't be able to take it off, right? So I think I might use some plastic wrap over it just to kind of make it be able to come off. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be a experiment, this whole thing, really. Um, and then also when I'm going to roll this out, I do have some tools. I mean, these are not, <laughs> they're not high end by any stretch. I mean, this was like whatever little generic tool set they had at the store when I got my polymer clay stuff the last time. Um, but I do have my X-Acto knife and I've got my palette knife, which will be great to like scoot under things if I get them stuck, because I probably will. And then this is a ball stylus that's used for something completely different that I use it for, but it, it's also kind of like the, some of the tools that they use to smooth things out. So I'll have this if I need it. Um, and then they do make like these little plastic things that you put them on each side. So when you roll the stuff out, you use that and um, you get an even thickness, which I don't have, but I thought, you know, chipboard is 1 16th. And this is probably about the thickness that I want for um, everything, so I just got two pieces of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these on either side when I roll it out. It'll stop my roller from going um, any lower down or any more uneven. So in theory, I should be able to roll it out even. I don't know. We'll see. So um, let's put this up here. We've got our measurements. Oh, and then I have this. <clears throat> this is just a tile, a regular tile, but that's what I use to bake them on in the oven because polymer clay you have to bake. Okay, so I got my foil on standby. Um, Ava recommends, and I do too, that you get like the cheap foil um, because when you crumple it up in the ball, especially if you're making something where you need to, to use it as an armature or base or something because 
if I was doing, say, you know, that mummy, I'm not going to do a solid thing of polymer clay because it would take forever for it to, to bake all the way through, but um, it's, it's a huge waste of material, right? And so when you get the nice expensive foil and you're balling it up and moving it around, you're getting these little foil cuts. And man, foil cuts are not, they are not a good time whatsoever. Okay, so we have our little things here for rolling it out going to do the pot. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to do the outside of it first and then I'll do the bottom. So that way I can take it once I put the outside on it, get it nice and smooth. I can take it and hold it down this way and just cut around um, to make the circle for it and then we'll smooth it on there. That's, that's my plan. So let's see how that goes. All right. So we'll take, let's see, I'll leave this up here. That way I can leave my stuff I'm not using at the time in there. That should be maybe a little bit more. All right. La la la. Put that in there. There's so many Ziploc bags. Okay. So now the height of this we are going to want to be 0.33 inches or 8.4 millimeters. We're going to call that eight and a half. And it's going to be a long strip, so I'll go ahead and like, you know, start it off in that same sort of direction here. And we'll just roll this out. And in theory, if we roll it good enough, we may have enough to do both, but... And I've got the glass mat, so hopefully I won't have to worry about it sticking too much. I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll stick just to vex me. There we go, we have it there. And I'm gonna use this ruler here first, just to, to give myself a straight line. So I'll just follow this along. And there's, um, there's a few really great polymer clay artists that are on YouTube, by the way. Should you ever wanna go on there and go, oh God, I wish I could do that. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, what's his name? Ace of Clay. He's really good. He does figures and stuff like that. Um, and then if you if you like any of the, the more goth side of life and, and stuff like that, or pop culture, um, was it Zan Von Zed? Oh my god, the stuff that she makes is just, it's just incredible. All right, so this one here is the metric ruler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make like kind of, you know, this, this doesn't have the lines where I can turn and still measure. So I'm just going to take it and make some little like height measurements. So we want um, 8.4 millimeters. <clears throat> so there's five, six, seven, eight and a half is going to be about there. I quit laying this so flat on here. It keeps like sticking to it. Stop it. And when you're doing, you know, any kind of measurement like that where you want to have a straight line with your length, do at least like three um, little dots so that you can, you can line everything up. All right, there we go. So now if I put this here and I line it up against all these little dots, which see that one was just like a bit off there. Okay, that should in theory be right, but look, I've gotten it all out of whack here. Make sure you're straight first. There we go. You know what I'm going to do with this so I can make sure it's lining up too. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, so there's that part. That should be our side. And yeah, you can totally tell it's not completely straight. I, I can totally tell it's not completely straight, but that's okay. We will, we will persevere. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get our little thing here 
And this stuff's not massively sticky, but it is a little sticky. So I just want to put this plastic wrap on here just in case I can't get it off of there, right? All right, so let's do this. Let's take this and lay it out straight here. I'm just going to use one of the, the lines on my craft mat. <laughs> I'm going to try to use one of the lines on my craft mat, but I'm utterly hopeless. Okay, there we go. That's, that's sort of-ish. That'll work. And I'm going to cut this off straight here. And how should I do this? Let's just bring it up like this around the bottom of it. Just kind of roll this onto here, shall we? So I can get sort of a slight idea where I want it to end. We'll, we'll give ourselves some extra room because it's always a good idea with me. Okay. So, bring it around here. And we don't want to add, you know, material, and I like that edge better, actually. So, we'll put you there. Okay, so, note to self, the um, plastic wrap is very annoying. <laughs> it keeps moving a bit. All right, so let's just get it over here and we'll cut it again. If you'd like to watch real people who know how to use polymer clay, I'll, I'll put their links below because I am not one of those people. I just, I'm, I'm not very good at this. Because see, I've stretched it and made it an eight. Okay, you know what? F's the plastic wrap. All right. Let's, let's look at 86 of plastic because I can't even with that. All right. I keep end up having to, you know, it's, it's stretching it and I'm having to move it and I'm losing my even thickness that I, I'm trying to achieve. So let's do it without doing that. I'm going to put it on here as pretty much as even as we can. And I want this to be right up to the edge because, of course, I'm going to put my base on there and it's going to make putting my base on there much easier. Okay, now let's cut this here. There. It's a little better. Still kind of uneven. So now here's where these little tools come in. And so like this one here, you can take this and kind of smooth this over. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's working. It's working good. There's a seam right there. It's like, here's this great tool to make things nice and smooth. And we're gonna put the seam of the plastic right in it. Doing what we can. Um, they also make like a liquid polymer clay. Um, that's really useful for sticking stuff to it, you know, so like if you have a, like when we go to put the little rings on there so you don't have to push it too hard. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, like especially when we get to those rings, I'm going to put those rings on there and I'm going to put it on there as best I can and then I am going to just leave it and that way it'll, it'll still bake in the shape and then if it doesn't stick, I'm gluing it because <laughs> we are not going there. Okay, so now the chances of me being able to take this off um, without messing it up are pretty much slim to none, but, oh crap, I did it on the wrong side. Ugh. Okay, you know what? We're, we're going to go ahead and take a chance on that because this I can put in the oven, this end. But I don't think I can for that end. Shoot. Okay. We're just going to recut this and take it off and we're going to put it on the other end. Yeah, this is going to be, it's going to be an adventure, let me tell you. All right, let's get you on here. And it's still fairly even, you know, of course, pulling at it and, and doing that is going to deform it a bit. So. There we go. So I just kind of put it so the end lined up, left the rest of it loose and kind of pushed it in and that seems to have, to have re-evened it out a bit. Okay, so let's, let's go back with this here. So yeah, when you're, when you're doing this, if you find something you can use to put it around, let's go ahead and say it's best to find something that you can also put in the oven. <laughs> yeah that's how this is gonna go and so I'm, of course this is not even remotely look at that that's not even remotely 
straight or even. So let's go ahead and kind of even that up a bit. Yeah, clay is not my forte. It really isn't. All right, so again, we're looking at 8.4 millimeters, so let's remeasure this. Are we there? Yes. Are we there? More or less. Make it a little taller. Are we there? I think so. Okay. I mean, it's okay. It's not going to be perfect. So now we've got this. We're just going to sit this here because, see, again, I can take that off, and this is, is metal. At least I hope it's metal. <laughs> We'll find out if it's plastic because that'll be a god-awful nightmare. Okay, so we're just going to sit that there. Now we're going to get some clay. We're going to roll some more out. We're going to make the bottom um, and we're going to get enough and roll it out so we can make the top as well. So I think this should do it here. And what I'll do, I mean this stuff doesn't really air dry. That's the, the appeal of it is you have a really, really, really long work time with it. But I mean, you leave something out long enough and believe me, it'll air dry anyway. So let's get this warmed back up and we'll roll this out for the top. And so I've decided for the uh, rings, um, I'm gonna go all the way around for the outer, all the way around for the inner. And then for that um, part where it has the, the Le Creuset name on it, I'm going to do a partial ring just like it is on the lid and I'm going to give it some space and then I'm going to like paint in <laughs> where it says Le Creuset. I'm going to try to paint in where it says Le Creuset um, or something because yeah that's not I, I really can't come up with a way that small that's going to work and be legible and you're not going to be able to really read it much anyway so you know we'll find a way to maybe take some of the paint and mix it with black or something I don't know we'll figure it out okay so let's roll out some more. And this one we want to be a little bit wider because obviously we're going to make lids and stuff. All right, and then with this stuff, you know, I do pull it up off the craft surface first because when you pull it up and it, if it's stuck down there, it's going to deform. So I'd rather it deform before I cut it, right? So we are going to take this and we are just going to sit it here. And I'm going to roughly cut around it. Because we can always kind of, you know, form it down and around to get rid of that extra and make it nice and smooth. And again, luckily this will bake at a fairly low temperature. So I'm fairly certain this is made of metal. I really hope it's made of metal. But, you know, it's not going to be a puddle in my oven either. And I'll be watching it very closely to make sure. That is for sure. Palette knife, that's where this comes in so I can get up under stuff. All right, so there we go. So now we have it here. And we can start kind of shaping this a little bit better. And I'm using the tool to kind of pull it down a little bit because if I use my finger to, to pull it down, I mean I can, but I'm probably gonna start changing the thickness of it. But you want it nice and smooth. Okay, so I think that's that's pretty good. So let's see what we are at. We want our diameter to be 20.3 millimeters, so that's 2.3 centimeters. No, it's two centimeters and a little tiny bit. And yeah, we're pretty much, we're, we're not too far off. The thickness is obviously gonna make it a little bit bigger, so kind of use your, um, familiarity slash skills with doing things with polymer clay and adjust accordingly. <laughs> yeah, since I have very little skill with polymer clay, I'm just going to adjust accordingly. Okay, 
So I'm going to sit this over here for just a moment. And we are going to work on the lid. And so the lid is going to be um, the same kind of diameter, but a little extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this just to do kind of a rough cutting around it. So I want to leave a little bit extra and then we can, you know, you can always take material away from it. Um, you can add to it too, but it's a little more difficult. I found just in my very limited experience with polymer clay. You know, that's that's the, the thing I hate about some of those channels like, you know, um, Zan Von Zed's obviously been working with polymer clay and, and all those different things for a very long time. And she's just incredible, but she just, it, she makes it look really easy. And then you're like, oh, I should do that. I could totally do that. And you're like, no, no, you can't. You, you really can't. You, not even just stop. Okay. Because, yeah, I can't. So <laughs> there's that. All right, now we do want to leave a little bit of extra material on this simply because we're going to need to kind of dome this lid a little bit too, right? Because it's not flat. It's going to stick up a bit. So for now, I'm going to put my extra back in my little bag. And I'm going to get this up under here. There's my, there we go. Let's get that. Kind of lift that up so it's not sticking. Okay. What I'm gonna do is take a little bit of my foil and I'm gonna crumple it up. Foil is great for that sort of thing. All right, and so I'm just gonna kind of, you know, and I don't wanna press too hard on that for sure because I don't want it to have the texture of the foil on the inside. I want it to be smooth. But I do need to kind of make this so that it's got sort of that same shape that I want out of the lid so that I can sort of lay it on it. Um, and make sure it's going to be the right size. And we can kind of put it back flat a little bit to put some of the other things on it. Um, and then we can kind of drape it over this and gently form it. And then it will bake on this for sure. But basically, we just want it kind of just a little bit domed. Not severe, but looks, looks OK. See, and so it'll kind of lay on here. And that'll give it sort of that raised um, look to it. And then again, if it does end up being, you know, a little too textury on the bottom side, it's the bottom side, who cares? All right, let's take this off and look and make sure it's not doing that too bad. A little bit. Yeah, this is, this is one of those projects that is, you know, Kind of like, is this going to work? Puh, I have no idea. And none. But it, don't ever let that really dissuade you. I mean, you know, you never know until you try, like I always say. And are you going to make mistakes? Yep, you are. And sometimes those mistakes will be so craptastic that you, you never want to touch that medium again. <laughs> Me and drawing, that's one of them. A um, little story for you when I was in high school, <clears throat> back in the dark ages, in my art class. And my art teacher was great. And she taught us all these different things. And so we had to do a mixed media piece. And that was before, you know, now mixed media is popularity sort of thing. You know, we didn't know that, what the heck that meant. But we had to take at least two of the things that she had taught us throughout the year and make an art piece out of it. And so I used um, chalk pastels and I used calligraphy for mine, right? And so I did, oh, and I've got a piece of cat fur, really? hate that. Let me get that out of there. Um, and so I did this little poem, right? So there's this, this one that's, you know, oh, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours, blah, blah, blah. All right. I did the one variation on it where if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't hunt it down and kill it. And, <laughs> and yes, I was like that even in high school. And so um, I did like a blue background and I did the bird, you know, like you do like the, the little shape where it's just the bird's wings. I did the birds like this and I get my project done and I'm showing my buddy. I'm like, Hey, look what I did. And he's like, dude, your, uh, your birds are upside down. I'm like, are you serious? I still have that by the way, because it was such a hysterically funny failure on my part, which most of mine are, um, you know, again, it, it happens. It's okay. Failure is always an option. 
All right, so my lid diameter is gonna be 0.82 inches or 20.8. So we're actually gonna go for 2.1 centimeters, 21 millimeters. And actually, if we look at this, this is way too big. So we're gonna go around a bit. And the other thing with polymer clay is, you know, we can bake it like this. Um, we don't have to add the little rings now, right? We don't have to add the little handles now. We can bake it once to get it nice and, um, you know, in its more firm state, and then add to it and bake it again. So that is an advantage that you have with it with the paper clay and stuff like that, since we're gonna be needing that to air dry, we are gonna have to do all of it at the same time, really. Because, yeah, it's putting, it, putting it on there and then trying to um, add stuff on later when it's dry becomes problematic. Okay, so I'm just con concentrating on getting the correct diameter at the moment, and then I'll worry about the other stuff. So it's getting there. So one of the things I'll do here in a second is I'll, I'll show you when I, especially when I do something I haven't done before and, and whatnot, and I make something and it's terrible, I usually keep it. It's like jewelry. I've, I've made jewelry for a really long time and, and I do wire wrapping and, and stuff like that. Wire wrapping is very difficult. Um, and I have my, my ones that, that look terrible and I have my ones now and it's just, it's just a matter of practice with it and just keep going with it and you'll learn. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So you're not going to learn a new art medium in a day. And if you pick something up and do it perfectly instantly, you're some kind of space alien or something, I don't know. Or you're just massively naturally super talented. Or sometimes it's close enough to an art form that you do already that it's, it's real easy to translate over. You know, like with um, dollhouse miniatures and making something like say furniture or curtains or whatever I'm gonna naturally be ahead of the curve because I've you know I've sewn stuff for Jesus 40 years now you know between embroidery hand sewing machine stitching all that kind of stuff so I'm gonna have a bit of an advantage on that okay so there we go there's our lid maybe Let's see where we're at with our diameter. Sort of got it's gotten bigger. What the hell? <laughs> it's because I'm trying to smooth out these these ends here. Let's go like that maybe. Instead of cutting material off. Watch this lid be like <laughs> quarter inch thick. Oh, it's gonna yeah. All right. Let's hold it up to the pot too, make sure it's going to fit. Because you know, I may have my little measurement here, but that may not have conformed exactly to it now that I think about it. So let's do that. And let's see if I can actually remove this from here, which I'm sure I can, so that we can actually try it on the pot and make sure it's going to fit on the pot, right? And then we can just put it back on here to get that dome as opposed to relying too much on forming it to this. Am I pulling it completely out of shape? Yeah, yeah, I totally am, but I also would like to remove it from this. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Okay. There we go. That's good enough. Okay. Back to the drawing board here. Let's put this on here and see if this is even going to fit. Now see, yeah, if I go just by the measurements, that's not going to fit. So I'm going to roll this back out a little bit. So I just don't like the way that's going. It's getting a little too thick. And I think what we'll do is we'll do these two parts. I'm going to get this to the right size for the pot and put it on there and we're just going to bake these off because yeah otherwise I'm going to go insane because every time I pick it up and it's going to deform it out of the right size. Okay that's a bit better. And at any 
any point, by the way, I may admit defeat on the polymer clay. <laughs> This, this is why I have two different kinds of air dry clay. FYI. Okay. Yes, that looks pretty round. That side looks like garbage. Oh, that side looks worse. Okay, let's put you down here then. Okay. There we go. And that's giving it that little gentle slope and kind of smoosh my edges back up so it looks more round. And we're just going to say to hell with it, right? Because you can, you can sand this and you can, you can cut it, you know, and, and shape it with a craft knife too, once you've baked it off. So we're just going to, we're going to cut our losses on that one and we'll, we'll go from there, right? <laughs> if I have to, I'll, I'll sand that bad boy into shape. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay, and then we have this. I am kind of, I don't know, looking inside it, this looks more plastic to me. I'm wondering... See if I can maybe get under here and we can maybe stretch it back into shape. I don't know. I think it's going to be disastrous. If anything, we can just kind of cut it off, but hey, this actually works real nice to get my pot even, so <laughs> I'm do that real quick though. Okay. See, now if that plastic wrap hadn't been such a pain, that would have been perfect. Now I could, in theory, just make a cut there and then reseal the cut on it. Don't know that I want to do that. Okay, I'm going to have a think and see if I can figure out a way to remove this from here without losing the shape because I really like the shape on this. Um, because yeah, I, I have a suspicion this is plastic. Okay, since I can't figure out a way to do that without deforming the bejesus out of it, um, we're just going to sit this down here. The female clay, it's going to go in a 230 degree oven for 30 minutes um, in order to cure. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to heat my oven up to 230, which is not horribly hot, so this might survive it. Um, and I'll put it in there and then after about a few minutes, yeah, I'm going to keep a very, very close watch on that. Um, so if it looks like it's deforming at all, it's coming right out. I know this will be fine. Um, and I'll let it go for a little bit and then maybe I'll be able to, to wiggle it off of here enough to let it finish going the rest of the way. So wish me luck. Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. So, um, as you can see, I'm sure by the title cards on the videos and the fact that of course it's me doing it. So, um, it's to be expected. This was broken into two parts this time. So not as bad as normal, but, um, you know, to go a little bit long with it. But we did make something extra um, in the next piece. So I will leave that as a surprise for you. But, um, yeah, I will see you guys in uh, part two then. Hey, Mary, it's Bye.